Hi, I am Kanupriya. I am a Felix Scholar at the Centre for Cultural, Literary and Postcolonial Studies at SOAS University of London. I have recently submitted my thesis on the Ryakan Sunday Book Market's parallel book history. The two fundamental suggestions that I have right at the onset are A. Planning your PhD application at least a year ahead and B. Making lists and tables. The first list that you should make is that of the universities, courses and of various funding options available for each. For this, rely mostly on the updated information on the university websites. It also helps to get in touch with current scholars at the university. Do not underestimate the power of open days held by these universities. You can prepare a day ahead and be ready with your list of questions. Your table should also include all the deadlines. You must write and highlight each deadline for university applications and funding applications separately. Once you have this, plan your application schedule accordingly. With each university, you must also include the list of documents that are required by each department. Keep checking the websites time and again and note down the important email addresses. Next. There is a lot of logistical work involved in applying which you should get out of the way sooner rather than later. For instance, getting your transcripts, degrees and mark sheets from your previous schools or getting in touch with your referees well in time. My next crucial suggestion applicable to PhD applications in the UK would be to always contact the potential supervisors and doing that well in time. I had contacted my current supervisor at SOAS in October and she helped me not only with my research proposal but also in providing recommendation letters for a few funding applications such as the Commonwealth Scholarship and the Felix Scholarship. Contacting potential supervisors allows you to predict whether or not you have a chance of making it, whether there is a space or an overlap in approach and interest in the kind of work you want to do. An advantage of the Zoom age is that you can attend their virtual lectures, with their permission of course. Make use of the digital space if you can to understand the courses and how they are taught. You can also apply to conferences and talks you could potentially attend before or during the application process. Next is funding. In the UK, getting a scholarship is highly contingent on writing a convincing research proposal. It also helps if you can identify exactly what the funding body is asking and clearly incorporating that into your funding statement. Here is a potential structure for your research proposal. First, an introduction. I suggest that you use an arresting example that shows that this is an important and fascinating topic. Here, place your key terms. Second is the state of the field. Lay out the main contributions and approaches systematically. Say how you draw on existing scholarship, but also aim to contribute something new. Your key concepts, methodologies and research questions is the third step. Try again to be as precise and specific as possible. Fourth is your corpus. Again, give your potential supervisors and the funders a sense that you know roughly what material is there and where you can find it. For example, in which libraries, in which publishers' archives, and so on. Essentially, this is what you are responding to. 1. How does your research advance existing work in your field? 2. What approach is it taking and how is this new or contributing to existing literature? Where are you entering as a researcher? Third, what is your action plan? How can you clearly indicate that your plan is viable in three to four years' time? Fourth, what resources does the university have that makes it an ideal space for your research? And fifth, if you can, give a general sense of the shape of the project with the chapters. If you cannot, it doesn't matter so much. Applying for a PhD abroad is a long-winded and an anxiety-ridden process. For me, having an organized layout reduced the amount of stress involved. But I was lucky to have a small support system in the form of friends, mentors and current students 
who consented to emails and long conversations over phone calls. This helped, especially with the constant self-doubt and undermining that application to the universities abroad brings. I repeat, do not shy away from seeking help. The universities that you are interested in are also equally interested in the valuable research that you are going to produce using their resources and scholarship. All the best.